Since we know how to assign coordinates on Earth, we now take a step further and assign them on the celestial sphere. First of all, Earth is small and the celestial sphere is large. Earth rotates west to east, as shown in this picture. And the celestial sphere therefore rotates east to west in this direction. This ex extends the north-south pole. The north pole is a natural position which splits the Earth between top and bottom with the equator being in the middle. If you're standing on the North Pole, you will look at and see stars that are above in this area here, particularly this star, for example, and this star will move during the course of a night. It'll move in this circle, and in 24 hours, it'll move around and come back on this side. Celestial latitude is called declination. So this particular star has a declination of 44.7 degrees in relative to the celestial equator, which we talked about before. Uh, celestial latitude is called declination, which can be positive or negative, or north or south of the celestial, uh, of the celestial equator. As Earth rotates, the, the sphere rotates east to west, the star will move according to the circle as we saw before. So as the star moves, we need to add a longitude, which is measured how far along from a reference point the star is. This is the reference point. How far along is it from here, along here? Uh, if you go all the way around, You have gone 360 degrees from uh, on this circle. Uh, in, in celestial coordinates, we don't use degrees, but we use hours. How many hours is the star away from our reference point? Uh, 3.7 hours to a maximum of 24 hours, then you start again. Uh, celestial longitude is called right ascension, and arbitrarily, we use a star through Pisces, the constellation Pisces, as our reference point. So looking at this example, we see that this particular star is 48 degrees above the celestial equator. So its declination is plus 48 degrees. It is also at uh, along the equator position of 16 hours. And what that means is th this is zero hour right here. So it is more than halfway around at 16 hours. And this would eventually be, if you continued this, this would eventually become 24 hours. And then after 24 hours, it starts at zero. So this is your reference point. Uh, We can see some reference points here. The Earth is a North Pole and a South Pole, and projections of the North Pole is the North Celestial Pole, and the projections of the South Pole is the South Celestial Pole. So somebody living in the North Pole, or near it, like here, will in fact have a star right above it, over here, and this particular star will be on its horizon. So here is an example of the celestial equatorial coordinate system. The celestial coordinate system is based on the concept of the celestial sphere, which is an imaginary sphere of infinite radius surrounding the Earth. Declination is measured from the celestial equator. It extends from zero degrees to, to a celestial angle of 90 degrees. So this star, for example, if, when it's on the celestial equator, its declination is zero. 
and when it's near the North Pole its declination approaches 90. Right now it's around 60 degrees. If you go below the equator the declination becomes negative. The second coordinate in the celestial equatorial system is right ascension. It's analogous but not quite the same as longitude. Much as Greenwich is the arbitrary zero point for longitude, right ascension also has a zero reference point. And right here, that point is called the vernal equinox point. Y will be discussed in the next slide. Uh, because the Earth rotates from from the perspective here the celestial sphere rotates once every 24 hours and therefore right ascension goes in terms of hours beginning with zero one hour two hours three hours four hours and finally when it comes around it approaches 24 hours and then goes back to zero In this example, we see a particular star located right here with its coordinates. It has a declination of 43.3 degrees. That means it's 43.3 degrees above the celestial equator measured along here. It has a right ascension of 8.4 hours. In other words, measured from the point where it's zero hours right here, it is eight hours and a little bit more along and if it goes all the way around comes back to the same spot that would be 24 hours now a, a star for example located down here will have a, a negative declination or we can say that it is south of the celestial equator uh, if it's located right here this particular star also has a negative star also has a negative declaration at only 3.9 hours. Zero hours is right at the corner here, and it is the place where the ecliptic crosses the celestial equator. This is the ecliptic. What is the ecliptic? Well, the ecliptic is the line along which the sun moves during the course of a year. So the sun, for example, is over here at one time of year. Of course, you don't see the stars when the sun is right there. And then it moves along this line during the course of a year. And that's called the ecliptic. When that line crosses the celestial equator right over here, that is defined, that position of this line is defined as zero hours. And then anything east of that is, is a positive number of hours. So the celestial sphere enables us to locate the position of a star on this celestial sphere. But the position of stars changes with time. So where is it in the sky at a particular time if you're standing out there? So in this simulation, we look once again at the celestial sphere surrounding the Earth with the observer located at some latitude on Earth, uh, in this case 38.5 degrees. So if, if the observer is more north or south, at any instant his, his view of the sky is only one half of the celestial sphere. So for example, somebody living on the North Pole we'll see that view of the sky and somebody uh, living further down like we were before say at 40 degrees latitude we'll see a different portion of the sky So from his point of view, 
any star like this one here in the sample is a certain number of degrees above the his horizon. So this particular star is 51 degrees above the horizon and if it was higher it would be 60 degrees above the horizon up to 90 degrees would be straight above above him. And of course if it was lower in the sky it would be 20, 10, etc. above the horizon. The other position we need is its latitude, its long, uh, local longi longitude, which is how far it is from the north, from your north. So in this particular case, the, the star is located 60 degrees east of north. So the these two coordinates would represent the position of that particular star. So let us see what we see in the sky, how that translates to our model of the celestial sphere. So here we are standing, looking around. We have our zenith, we have the stars, we have north and south. Let's put ourselves at a position, say over here, at some latitude. This line defines the part of the sky that we can see. We see in the celestial sphere we can see everything that goes from here down down to here. That's our, our horizon corresponding to all the stars located on this curve. We have north and south, and therefore the Earth rotates around this line, along this line. So this line is the equator that we've just drawn and the angle between the equator and our position on Earth is with what is called our latitude. It turns out that also this angle here is that same angle which is also the latitude angle. If we look at a star, for example Polaris, the North Star, we can see that the angle between that star and our horizon is in fact our latitude. So the, uh, the North Star will be the same degrees above the horizon in the north as our latitude is. Now if the observer looks at a star directly overhead, say right over here, he will find that that star is also uh, at, the, at his latitude, at the angle which is his latitude, and that that star, as, as the Earth rotates, goes around a circle like this. So it will move around during the course of a night. It won't be at, at uh, your zenith very long. Different stars will come around this way and appear at the zenith and this star will actually move around in the other in uh, this uh, this